what's up, y'all? It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful Classy Lady Sparkle. Yeah, it's definitely in the house. And ladies and gentlemen, man, one of the episodes, one of the segments that I love, you know, the interviews and the interviews. We're gonna jump right into it. So, Sizzle, who do we have today? Who do we have today? So we have author, writer, just doing everything. Rico Salam from mm. West, he's a West Philadelphia native, native um, who discovered his talent for writing at the age of 19. So his childhood wasn't what you would call the best upbringing. He was raised in a household full of alcoholics and drug addicts. He didn't let that stop him from pursuing his dreams. After teaching himself the art of storytelling, Rico wrote his first novel, Get Mine or Get, Get Naked in 2008. After Get Mine or Get Naked was published, people began to take notice of Rico's talent for descriptive storytelling, including Golden Globe Award winner actor Ving Rhames. Mm. Rico and cool. Ving Rhames, they met and um, had a meeting in 2011, and immediately Ving Rhames agreed to let Rico write and produce the screenplay called Blood Brother, a movie that Rico was working on with Philly native rapper Gilly the Kid. After filming Blood Brother, Rico went on to start his own film production company called Rico Salon Productions and released his own film titled Heroin, an award-winning film that is sweeping the nation by raising awareness to the growing heroin epidemic. Welcome to the show, Mr. Rico Salon. Yay. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Welcome to the show, my brother. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, no Glad doubt. To be here. No doubt, no yes. doubt, no doubt. I've been trying to get here for the longest. Hey, look, look. <laughs> hey, 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 I heard you canceled on us. Uh, I, I mean, you, 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 you I heard you canceled on us. No, it slipped my mind. Oh, it slipped my mind. I got you. I'm gonna let that ride. I'm gonna let that ride. You know what I'm saying? So we, look, we, look, okay. I want to say that we love you. We love everything that you're doing, my brother. Yes. I had the opportunity to be at um, where was that? The Philadelphia Independent F- oh, Film Awards. Yeah. I mean, y'all had like almost 50 nominations. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About eight. Uh, just about yeah. just he yeah. said only just eight, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I think um was well deserved, man. I actually watched it, uh supported you guys. I watched mm-hmm. it. Um Lawrence Sizzle was in a movie. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yes. what you're doing is amazing, you know, especially in terms of the message, right? So let's yeah. talk a little bit about um let's start from the beginning and what made you or, or what what you know got you thinking about this is what I want to produce, create, co-write, and all that type of stuff, you know? As far as the story right here? Yeah. yeah. Particular, yes. Um, well, like she mentioned, I grew up in a household full of, you know, drug addicts and okay. alcoholics and stuff like that. So there's many stories to tell just right, right. growing up in that environment. But in particular, I just wanted to show, because a lot of people, when they write, like, it's, it's so many people talking about drugs, but they glorifying it. Right, right. And I wanted to show the opposite side, the other side of the, of the drug game mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. how it's affecting families because people don't want to talk about that. It's like they sweep that under the rug. It's not, you know, it don't affect them. They act like it don't affect them. But in reality, it affects every, everybody. I'm saying most people know somebody, if it ain't mm-hmm. directly, is right, right. somebody you know that, you know, Facts. Is, is, is an addict. And a lot of people out here dying, don't mm-hmm. nobody want to talk about it. So I wanted to uh, put the story out just so people can but see something they can relate to right. and don't be ashamed the fact that they got somebody in their family that's an addict or, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm saying I got a lot of people in my family that's close ones to me. And growing up, I always was ashamed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times, to be honest, I ain't, I, I didn't even want people to know that that's my family member. Mm-hmm. You see them on the street, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, that's my aunt. You know, yeah, right, 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 right. And, exactly. You know, that's my uncle. And then, I, you know, I just mm-hmm. I make my friends and I just keep walking, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Until I got older and understood, like this is reality. This is where it we come is. from, and it's a it's a, a disease. Right, mm-hmm. right. It's a right. disease. It ain't like you know they was born like this. Is just okay. you know they got hooked. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. wanted to tell the story, but I also wanted to show how I wanted to show th- those that's doing the drug, mm-hmm. show them how they affect us. Mm. Right. Because a lot of right. times they they be caught up in doing them mm-hmm. that they don't realize the effects that they having on all of us. Right. Right, and exactly. So that's why, you know, the story, you know, with, with Wanda, you know, yeah. and, and her father, you know, they mm-hmm. had that close bond. And, and I wanted to show how the love that, mm-hmm. the, uh, the unbreakable love that someone has for their family member that no matter what, 
Right. They're going to stick by their side no matter what. They're going to make sure they are. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when you're thinking of, um, how can I put it, um, in revisiting, you know, your, 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 your families, mm-hmm. you know, uh, history and background, what, how did that affect you after you released the movie and then looking back on it? Did you feel kind of like, you know? Kind of like I ain't, like I told their business. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they they understand though. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Like my aunt to this day, she she happy that I put it out and she talked to me and she like, you know, this was me. Right, right, you right. You know, I'm doing better, uh, but I'm proud of you, nephew. For that's doing what's this. up. You know, but mm-hmm. she always she always tell me like, you know, that story was about me. He ain't tell nobody, but it's about me. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's when it really know, touched it. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I always wondered how did that feel? Because most people can do movies kind of fiction, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or c- creatively mm-hmm. come out the head and say, oh, God, I got this idea. I want to mm-hmm. put this movie together. Mm-hmm. Write it and throw it out there. But yeah. then, you know, when you when you create movies that are like real life stories, right, that's true, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a different perspective. And you got a way, should I do this? You know, will I hurt yeah. somebody? Right. You know, and I was just wondering, you know, how did you feel now that it's out there and your aunt see it and everything? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, what's what's the next move from there? Is it another kind of family based or or or, or kind of community city wide situation, or is it more creative? Do you want to explore something different? But well, well, what happened is like you know, it started off as a family thing, right? And it, just me, just wanting to show you know, them, how they affect us. But now this has gotten so big now. Right, right. Because mm-hmm. it's affecting so many people and so many people can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Now, and then with the epidemic going on, right. it's like now that, you know, we got attention from the um, the city council and the, mm-hmm. um, Fantastic, yeah. the um, attorney general. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now they want us, you know, me and Ryan, my, my director right here, right. we're going to start going to schools and stuff, speaking mm-hmm. to the kids. So wow. we got we got like a situation set up like we just getting the movie shortened because it's kind of long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So once mm-hmm. we get that done, we're gonna start going to the schools and showing it to the kids and stuff, mm-hmm. wow. and hopefully prevent them from, you know, following this rope. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. that's so awesome. it's getting it's getting um, you know, it's it's mm-hmm. where it start off. You know, you know, Lauren, we was there like we yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we we had this small idea and this thing just blew. Just blew, 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 blew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. just mm-hmm. you yeah. know. And we have um, director Ryan yeah. Sellers here. He had the opportunity to direct the film Heroin. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about your experience directing. Um, well, it's funny because uh, now that we look back on it, it was a while ago now. Yeah. Like, it was years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, at the time, that was the first time I directed a feature film. Like, I had mm-hmm. done shorts and, like, little things here and there. But that was, like, wow. You know, so, you know, when we first looked at the script and everything, mm-hmm. you know, and it was funny because I remember uh, – when I first, he first told me about it, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, give me a script. He's like, all right, I'll give you a couple months, and I'll give it to you. I was like, all right, mm-hmm. cool. And so I'm not thinking about it. And one day he's like, oh, yeah, here's the script. I'm like, oh, all right then, let's do this. So, you know, I went through the whole thing. I was like, wow, this is really good. Mm-hmm. How can I really bring this to life on the screen? You know, because right. there's one thing to write this down, and, like, when you read a book, you get the idea and the, mm-hmm. you're picturing in your head, okay, this is this. But how mm-hmm. can I bring that in a way that does it justice? Right. So... Uh, you know, and you were in it. Like, we mm-hmm. did a lot of different close-ups to really... Because I wanted to make people feel like they were a part of this. Like, they right. were in this experience. Right. So right. we have some scenes that, like, like we, we're graphic mm-hmm. because we want to make it as realistic as possible. We don't exactly. want to sugarcoat mm-hmm. anything because we really want to drive this point home. Mm-hmm. And I believe mm-hmm. that's what people like the most about it is, like, it's raw. You know, mm-hmm. that's the best word I can use for yeah, it. It's yeah. raw. Yeah, we don't hold back, you know, there's language, there's everything else because mm-hmm. we want people to feel like when you're watching this, wow, is that really how it is? Right. You know, because some people watch it and understand it. Other people mm-hmm. from, you know, other cultures and things like that will look at it and be like, oh, I didn't know they had to deal with it like right, that. Right, exactly. You know? And another and, thing I think that's good about it mm-hmm. is that the the people that are um, family members of the ones that are, that are using, they mm-hmm. don't actually see what's going on right when they're using. Exactly. So there's a part, you know, a scene in the, exactly. in the movie that it shows, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then we wanted to take it a step further. We mm-hmm. interviewed actual people who were users, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a segment at the beginning where we, we went to different places, went mm-hmm. to the methadone clinic, mm-hmm. and we talked to different people. We mm-hmm. went to the streets, mm-hmm. we went to Kensington, and 
they told us we was like all right well we'll give you guys 15 dollars. tell us you know tell the camera tell people why they shouldn't do this <laughs> and, <laughs> and they told us but they didn't hold back so like mm. you know yeah. No, no, no yeah so check this out right um so as a director right mm. how do you feel when uh you have a producer writer you know, um, executive producer, they come to you with this idea and they say to you that, you know what, um, I have this idea and it's something as heavy as this. How mm -hmm. do you as a director, because essentially that was his baby, right? Yeah. Especially as personal as it is, right? Yeah. How did you kind of take that within yourself and say, you know what, I'm going to really nervous this and make sure I do the best that I can possibly do so he can look at it and say, you know what? Thank you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I did was I broke the whole script down. You know, I was like, all right. And I, you know, use my director eyes, what I like to call it, where you just look at and you, you read the scene and you bring it to life in your head. And I'm like writing shots. That, so basically I wrote down shot for shot. Okay, I can picture this like this. And then I asked him, okay, how would you like to see that? And he came and said, okay, well, I would like to see this. And so I said, okay, how can I make that cool? How can I add a camera movement in here to make this work? Mm -hmm. How can I bring emotion out of these actors right, to right. make this scene work? Mm -hmm. You know, that was the first thing. Then the next thing was getting the people together, you know, because this is not a one-man thing, you know what I mean? Right. And I told him from the beginning, I said, listen, we got to hire people to do this because this is not something we could do by ourselves. I don't want to just get a random camera. Like, I want to do this right. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to get a whole lighting crew. I want to get lighting people. I want to get camera people. I want to get a cinematographer. I want people mm -hmm. around. I want to get good actors so that we can really bring this vision to life. Mm -hmm. And with what we were able to work with, all we ended up getting was a good camera guy, a good lighting guy, and a sound guy. Right, so right. we had to do the whole thing with only four people. Mm -hmm. So it drastically Jeez. changed everything. Because it went from, all right, we got a month shooting schedule to get done. And I had, at first we had, how many was it? It was like seven people at first. Yeah. We had literally a person for lighting, a person for camera, a person for sound, uh, assistant director, and like every other position. And he was the producer. Right. It went from that to having me directing, him producing, one camera guy who also was doing lights, one mm. sound guy, one guy wrangling all the actors. Mm. Right, right, right. You know, which typically on films, you've got 10 departments, yeah. including you know set design. Yeah, and the so. funny thing is, especially when you talk about independent, mm -hmm. it always turns out, and it happens that mm -hmm. way, right? Yeah, it First, because we don't necessarily have a budget, right? You know, mm -hmm. and the support. But why do you think um, it's hard to really garner the support that's needed to really produce you know the classics and the talent and the, and the fantastic movies that people pr produce why well the biggest two reasons right. is one is budget two mm -hmm. is time right, right, right. you know because when you have a big budget to work with you can get people's time right, 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 right. Oh, yeah. when you don't you got to work around everybody's schedule yeah. you know we had uh we had nina who was a radio host we had mm -hmm. lauren who's doing radio right, right. we had different mm -hmm. other people who did other things right, right. Mm -hmm. so it's like okay how do we schedule their time and you know you ask people okay can you give us this time can right. you give us mm -hmm. we can't offer you this but can you give us this time? So it's a right. give and take, right. you know, and at that point you're working off of the most dedicated people. You got the people mm -hmm. who really care. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, even though we had a small crew, everybody really cared. Mm -hmm. They were, they were all where I was at. Cause I told each one of them, I said, listen, I can't pay y'all like I wish right. I could. Like y'all, mm -hmm. if I could, I pay y'all higher than the average rate of these things, mm -hmm. but I can't afford it. We can't afford it, but we want to get this film done. And I believe in this project. Cause mm -hmm. I believe this is going to, change lives i believe people are going to see this yeah. and have a better understanding of what we deal with every day yeah. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that's the main thing fantastic yeah. fantastic so i got a quick question before we get ready to let you guys go um for the producer right mm -hmm. now fantastic movie um kudos to that again because i think it touched so many people and it's still it's still moving you know, yeah. people still watching, right? And actually, we just getting started. Fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. which which is a great transition to yeah. my next point, right? Where do you go from here when you know that you have such a um, classic movie that you produce that people are watching? How do you go in your head and think about something that will potentially top that? I already got something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm already there with it." No doubt. It. Yeah, we actually because this come from a book. I wrote, mm -hmm. this is a book, Get mm -hmm. Mine and Yankee. Right, right, You know, right. we just changed it to heroin because it's more, you know, 
direct. Right. You right, know? Right, right. Mm-hmm. But um, I had already started the sequel to that. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, which starring Lauren, you know. Okay, awesome. okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Ready? Sizzle is going to be in the building. She so, you know, we got to promote that all crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ready. Yeah. So, so, I'm saying it's still dealing with the issue of, because we just, you know, we just don't touch on heroin, but we touch with everything that comes with heroin. Right, right, right. Like, yeah. you know, the HIV. Because mm. right. a lot of yeah. people, mm. they don't talk about that either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the so, elephant in the room, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's the next thing on the, on the, on the, um, the next story. Mm-hmm. We touch on that a lot. Right, right. I don't okay. want to tell y'all the story. You know, for those who, right, for those exactly. who haven't uh, saw exactly. heroin yet, but HIV plays a part too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the next thing, and wow. you know, we just we just want to we just want to we just want to put the word out there and spread awareness on mm-hmm. everything that we want. Like you said, the elephant in the room. Right, right. right. We want to spread that awareness about it. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's always room for that. I know that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. So that's heavy. And the conversation got a little heavy, man. But you know, yeah. I, I wish you guys continued success. I think what what you guys are doing are amazing. I think the stories and you know the subject matters is profound, and I think that's something that we need to address more because it, mm-hmm. it is the elephant in the room, and people yeah. are scared to touch it, especially yeah. as it relates to where we live in Philly. Exactly. Right. right? And yeah. heroin is heavy in Philly. If you know mm-hmm. the statistic of HIV in Philly, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right, and yeah. so being able to touch those things and and at least start the the, the conversation, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. where we begin the solutions, right, right. And, mm-hmm. the, and the healing, so to speak. So before we let you go, I'd like to know how you know our fans and followers can get in contact with you, follow mm-hmm. you on social media, yeah. and then maybe I'll go into uh, my special question. Go. Oh yeah, y'all can follow me on uh, Instagram at Rico Salon Productions yeah. on Facebook, Rico Salon. Mm-hmm. And the movie, we got the we we got distribution set up too, but oh, Amazon and um, iTunes. Okay. So it's gonna be in there about another month or so. Okay. So they go watch uh, heroin on uh, iTunes and Amazon. No awesome. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I'm on Instagram at RJ underscore Dedication. That's my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. Follow me. See some of the stuff. Not only for this movie, but for other movies I work on, for other projects that's coming up. And uh, stay tuned. And Rico, what do you have coming up? You have something else, right? Yeah, I got some stuff I'm working on. Um, which one? Can't really, can't really say right. Yeah, now. I'm, 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 do, I'm been doing a lot of writing. Okay, okay. I'm, okay. I'm, uh, I'm trying to do some big things. Yeah, so I got, yeah. I, you know, I made a few connects, and I got some stuff. I'm basically just writing right now. Mm, okay. And because I ain't, uh, You're in the ha- heroin still took all my money. So. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so right now I'm just writing and trying to get use other people's money right there. <laughs> got a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for coming to the show, man. Make sure you come back out, especially give us a call when you're doing your next launch. We'll come out with the cameras oh, yeah. and everything, you Definitely. know, red carpets, interview Definitely. and do what we do. Definitely.